you're off to a great start with the 360 journey. Last time, we talked about the start of your journey by considering God's purposes for you. We mentioned several verses from the Bible that pointed us toward God's plan for a flourishing life, or as Jesus said it, life to the full. Now in this second session, we wanna talk about the guide. Since every week we'll be referring to the Bible as our guide for this flourishing life, today we wanna discuss just a few of the reasons that we can trust the Bible to be that guide for our faith and our life. We're gonna talk about the Bible as reliable, as relevant, and as revealing. So first of all, the Bible as reliable. The Bible was written over a span of 1,500 years by more than 40 writers from all walks of life, kings and fishermen, poets and doctors and generals. Different books were written in different places, dungeons and hillsides and islands and wilderness on three different continents, Europe, Asia, and Africa. It was even written in three different languages, Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic. And yet, the Bible is a single story, a story with a beginning and an end, and a plot running through it, just like any good book or movie that you enjoy. It's amazing that you could take dozens of authors from all kinds of different cultures and historical moments who often know little or nothing about each other, and yet who tell a single coherent, compelling story. Now this Bible has pages and chapters and a binding, but the story that it's telling is so much bigger than this. And we have some really great reasons to count the Bible as uniquely trustworthy. It turns out there's a mountain of archeological and manuscript evidence that makes the Bible by far the most compelling ancient document in existence. My friend, Brian Dwyer, gives a great example. Today, we have 49 existing copies of Aristotle's ancient writings. Homer's The Iliad is a little bit better with 643 copies in existence. But the Bible's New Testament wins by far with almost 5,700 surviving copies in its original language and over 19,000 copies in other ancient languages. Now the variations in these ancient manuscripts are incredibly minor, meaning the texts that we have in our hands today are true representations of the originals penned by first-hand witnesses to the events they recorded. Now, modern day scholars are astounded at the level of detail and precision in biblical accounts of events and histories, from details like the Bible's account of a tunnel dug under the city of Jerusalem by King Hezekiah, which was discovered by archeologists thousands of years later, to accounts of ancient conflicts and rulers corroborated by other ancient sources. The Bible is the gold standard for reliability in ancient records. So when we put the Bible to the test of history and archeology, span it consistently proves to be accurate and dependable. But that's not the only compelling point about the Bible that I wanna talk about. The second one is this, the Bible as relevant. Far from being an ancient book that has no relevance to today, the Bible provides a nuanced and grounded perspective on some of the most pressing matters in our lives. From basic questions about how to be a good friend or a loving spouse, to how to raise your children or lead well in business, all the way to the deepest questions that we ask about suffering, meaning, and purpose in life, the Bible speaks to the whole of our experience as human beings. Now think about this. The Bible is being read right now by people of every age, from an eight-year-old to a 20-something to an 80-something. People from every occupation, engineers, lawyers, nurses, tradesmen, teachers, from cultures and languages around the world. How many books do you know that are relevant to every person on the planet? But for me, the Bible remains relevant because it gives the most satisfying explanation of my experience in the world. The Bible gives me a picture of a world that is both beautiful and broken. Beautiful because it's made by a wise and creative God, but broken because of selfishness and sin. And that has been my experience. Beauty on the one hand, the love and joy that I experience with others, the sense that there's meaning and purpose to life, the deep longing that I feel for justice and goodness, that's the beauty. But then there's brokenness too, suffering and loss that I see and experience. And this matters, the sense that that suffering and pain is wrong. That's where I think the Bible is the most relevant. 
You see, if life has no deeper meaning, then suffering also has no meaning at all. But if, as the Bible says, life is created to be purposeful and beautiful, then I am right to find purpose in living and I'm right to be grieved by suffering. There was a philosopher named Friedrich Nietzsche and his critique of our modern world was that it didn't have the guts to admit that if we cut God out of the picture, then goodness, tragedy, beauty, right, wrong, justice, and injustice, none of those things have any meaning at all. I think that the Bible is relevant because it makes sense of both my longings and my limits. It says I was made for something beautiful and epic, something real and deep and transcendent, but it also says that I'm limited and flawed. Any other picture of human life and community just seems to fall short to me. So the Bible is reliable and it's relevant, but I also want to talk about the Bible as revealing. Because the Bible speaks to exactly where you and I live every day, it has a way of helping us see ourselves in a very honest light. There's a verse in the Bible in Hebrews that says, for the word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. It's saying that's revealing. Another verse in James says that the Word of God is like a mirror. Now, none of us would dream of starting our day without at least checking uh, in the mirror on the damage that the night did to us. That mirror doesn't lie, and we need the truth if we're gonna get it together for our day. And this is what I want you to see. The Bible is revealing because like a mirror, it tells the truth about us. But even more importantly than that, the Bible is revealing because it tells the truth about God. The story that is being told in this book has a hero, a main character, but it isn't me and it isn't you. That main character is God, and I learn more about me as I learn more about Him. I understand my roots and my purpose when I see who God is and where I fit into His story. So this book is an invitation to personally know the God that is revealed in its pages. This main character that I see throughout the pages of this unique text is the mysterious, beautiful, powerful, and personal God. The whole book is pointing to Him and to the big reveal of who He is in the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus said to His followers, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. If that sounds like a bold claim, trust me, it was just as bold when Jesus first said it. But that is really the point of the Bible. God wants you and me to know Him. That's what this 360 journey is all about. So let me give you one more story. In the 1960s, there was a Russian cosmonaut named Yuri Gregarian. He was the first man to go into space. And when he came back to Earth, uh, in the news he reported that he had visited the heavens and had not found God. Now, this was part propaganda for the Soviet Union at the time, which officially did not believe in God. And there was a, an author named C.S. Lewis who responded at the time and said that a man going to, to space, coming back and reporting that he had not found God was the same way as Hamlet going into the attic of his castle and looking for Shakespeare. What he meant is this, there's no way that Hamlet, who was a creation of Shakespeare, could truly know Shakespeare unless Shakespeare were to write himself into the drama. I want you to see that's what this Bible is. The Bible story takes its most dramatic turn when it tells us how God wrote himself into our story so that we might know him personally and profoundly. And that was the unexpected conclusion that the first followers of Jesus were convinced of. The truth about God, as recorded in this book, changed their lives, and it still changes lives today. And so, as we go on this 360 journey, we want to smash the glass on the museum case and take a fresh look at the Bible as God's guide to a flourishing life as He intended it.